Good evening, and welcome to It Matters Radio with your hosts, Monica Brinkman, Kenneth Weens, and Carrie Hall. It Matters Radio offers you the very best with meaningful conversations on new music, new books, and fun topics. It Matters Radio searches for and discovers the depth, diversity, and meaningfulness of topical subjects. It Matters Radio, with a caring guest focus, enjoyable atmosphere. Join us, won't you please, for It Matters Radio. If there's music to enjoy, a great story to be told, and wonderful topics to discuss, It Matters. And now, here are the hosts of It Matters Radio, Monica, Ken, and Carrie. Welcome to Thursday night's live broadcast of It Matters Radio. You know, Ken Carey and I are always happy to bring our listeners and entertainment. And tonight we will not disappoint. Nope. But before we get into the show and introduce our first guest, Ken and Carrie, did you I know that you're always looking around for a little interesting stories. So did you have anything to share with the listeners today? Uh, yeah, actually, I do, Monica, on a very sad note. Gabriel Garcia Marquez, author of A Hundred Years of Solitude and winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature, died today, at least at the ripe old age of 87. Mm. Oh, wow. wow. I didn't How even sad. know that. No, I wow, didn't either. that's pretty sad. Oh. Gosh. Well, pretty disappointing. How about you, Carrie? I know you have a little issue there. Yeah. Well, I don't know if this is happy or sad, actually, Monica. You know, uh, most (laughs) of our listeners recently might have heard that there is a very vulnerable computer virus, my dears, called Heartbleed, and it's making its way into HTTP's sites. Now, this is the interesting thing. It affected the Canada Revenue Agency when over 900 Social Security numbers were breached. Now, luckily, Monica and Ken, they were able to trace it back to a 19-year-old London Ottawa man, and, uh, of course, he was arrested. Now, one bit of good news for all this, folks, they extended their tax filing till May 5th. Yay for Canada. I don't think they had a choice there, huh? (laughs) Amazing. (laughs) Nine hundred yeah. people. That's that's a lot of people, guys. Wow. Yeah. yeah. They're gonna have some uh, we should we should iterate. That's Canada, folks. So if Correct. you're here that in the U.S. Yes. yes. Ottawa, yeah, Canada. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Now, that, yeah. And on another note, even more serious in my mind, there's a shortage of filter fish. Why is this year unlike all other years? because of the 11th plague, the polar vortex, which created a shortage of the filter fish, an appetizer equally loathed and loved by generations of Jewish people. The vast majority of white fish used by fishmongers, the filter makers, and home cooks in the United States comes from fisheries on the Great Lakes and in Western Canada. So it may feel finally like spring in the rest of the country up to four feet of ice still linger on the lakes, which froze almost entirely during this past winter. So, so no Javelta fish. Now, so I'm convinced because I'm one of the few people that is not Jewish who really like Javelta fish. So that's kind of sad. <laughs> We're having it is sorted. sad. What are they going to do? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm kvetching. I don't know what I'm going to do. I know. It's pretty <laughs> bad, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, but my problem is I I bought I bought a lot of horseradish and now I don't have anything to put my horseradish on. Ooh, roast beef is good, Ken. Stay with us. It Matters Radio continues right after this. Hi, this is Caitlin Carter, and you're listening to It Matters Radio. Be on the lookout for my new single, Rust Day, released in June 3rd. Oh, she's a little sweet. 
sweetie, huh? Oh yeah, my God! I wish we could. Done it. I wish we should, uh, can have her back because uh, she's fabulous. Yeah, she's coming cool. back in June, guys. So yay! Yeah. Oh good. But anyway, now speaking of music, um, I am so so very very excited about the guest we're having this evening. So Carrie, will you please introduce our musical guest? Hi there, and our musical guest is Sonia Eden. How are you doing, Sonia? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Great. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to just do a quick bio on you, and then we're going to play our music, and then we'll talk, okay? Fine. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Sonia Eden is a singer-songwriter from Barbados who delights in crafting her own experience of island soul and smooth jazz. Within a week of the release of her debut EP, Pieces of Me, instant requests were received from DJs in Australia for regular rotation on their radio playlist. Sonia's career has been highlighted by several international performances, including opening for the Martin Harley Band at the Virgin Holidays Music Festival in the Barbados, the Snyton Music Festival in Nottingham, along with appearances on BBC Radio and Kemet Radio 97.5. Eden's second album, Truth, Love, and Life, has received international airplay in the U.K., Australia, Germany, and the U.S. So, Monica, could you play our first song, It's a Beautiful Day? Oh, this is beautiful, too. Beautiful day, and I won't 
something unless you've lived it and it's your own truth so in the in the times when i need lifting up i write something that lifts me and i hope that it will lift others well it certainly does it certainly does it's just beautiful so um i'm coming to you as a uh, totally ignorant about music <laughs> tell people what is island soul talk about that a little bit well it's it's like I'm from the islands. I'm from an island called Barbados, mm-hmm. and it's my own definition of of soul music because I'm not from North America. I'm from the Caribbean, so my own expression and my own experience of what soul is will sound different from the norm. It will sound different from a North Amer- North American experience. So it's mm-hmm. just an expression. It's a personal expression of my own truth and my own personal view, my own contribution to music. Wow. So how long have you been writing and performing music, Sonia? About 10 years now. Wow. That's great. Did you have any influences while you were growing up in Barbados? So, so many. My dad was a DJ and he used to play like from rock music to like, heavy metal he played some wow. of everything so like i was exposed to so many different types of music like fleetwood mac sting Ooh. bob marley all types of music so to me it's it's not about genre it's just like you listen with your heart mm-hmm. yeah. and and if it touches you then no matter what it is you love it well, it's beautiful. But like I said, uh, all the songs that I listened to, Sonia, were very uplifting. Thank you. And it just it gave me a really good feeling inside. So yeah, I think, I had, I think that's, sorry, ahead. I think that's what music should do sometimes. It shouldn't just be all dance hall or, or stuff to party to, but something that mm-hmm. can get you through those low times. Because that's mm-hmm. what music has done for me. Well, it's, like I said, it's definitely reflected in your songs. So I have to ask you the big question I ask all our artists that come on. Studio or live performance? Which do you <laughs> like best? I, it's it's wow. a tough one, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, I love the studio. Okay. I love the studio for writing and creating, but in terms of expression and that outlet and that energy and that response it has to be performance so i don't know if that answers your question i love <laughs> <Okay>. them both <laughs> okay well, that's perfectly okay absolutely there's not one over the other yeah. so you play guitar and did you do did you start the, out with the guitar uh, also at an early age no, I started the guitar a bit later. Like I could hear the melodies in my head, but mm-hmm. I couldn't find a way of getting it out. So I would either sing out the melody, and then I decided to to learn to play the guitar as a way of expression. And I mainly use it to write songs. Wow. So do you work uh, by yourself, basically, or do you have uh, some great band members you want to mention? I do. I've worked with some wonderful musicians. Uh, Jimmy, Sanya Haynes. Jimmy was involved with Steel Pulse, a reggae band. 
Victor oh, wow. Linton. Victor played with Billy Ocean and toured Ooh. with Billy Ocean. Mm-hmm. My producer for Truth, Love and Life was Dwayne Scarrett. Kerry Mason, who is autistic, and he is a fantastic musician. Really? There's some really gifted souls who have lent me some assistance. Sorry about that. That's just fascinating, fascinating. So let's talk a little bit about your new EP. When's it, it's out, coming out, and um, what do you want to say about it for our for our viewers or for our listeners today? Right, I'm writing right now. Right, the past couple of months have been. I've just been writing and writing, and it's not. I'm still like it's still in baby stages where I'm putting down the ideas and putting down the cards and putting down the melodies. I still haven't chosen a studio, but I'm hoping it'll be out before the end of the year, and I will get back to you on that. But oh, it's just do. right now. I'm still writing. And just deciding who I want to share the experience with in terms of musicians and studio and stuff like that. Because I do like to work with a lot of different people. Sorry, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, Now, is the second album called Truth, Love, and Life? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Just my initial. Yeah, my initial initial EP was called Pieces of Me. Well, that's a, yes, I have that down. I think that's fabulous. That's yeah. fabulous. And you got, my dear, international airplay. That's fabulous. Yeah, like the first time we, I said, okay, well, let's just put it out there on the Internet and see what happens. And mm-hmm. the very next day, this DJ like emailed me up and said, can you just send me whatever you have so I can play it for you? And I thought I was so blown away by that because I, I just wasn't expecting it. Wow. Now, also, and I want to talk a little bit more about it after the song, um, is you have written some music for a movie. And before we get into that, uh, Monica, could you go right ahead and play her next song, Fantasy, for me? I sure will. Here you go. Drifting, trying to find the truth, trying to face the questions in my mind. You reached out to hold me, help me find some love, help me find the end to all my strife. Now I've been living in a fantasy, now I believe in things that I can't see. Renewed new hope is how to be The things you do to me You guide me Oh, I'm living for you, babe I'm believing in you, babe I found the joy in my life I'm glad you hold me You reached out to save me Only hope that I can do this Help me find the truth, hey. Help me find the joy, yeah. Help me find the love of my life. Cause I've been living in a fantasy. Now I believe in things that I can't see. Renew new hope, this is how it can be. The things you do to me, you got me. Oh, I'm living for you, babe. I'm believing in you, babe. Thank you. 
songs on it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's nice. <laughs> Thank it, you. Are you kidding? It's wonderful, and I love yeah. that little island flavor. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> Definitely. I, I, I got when I heard this song, Sonia. I I swear to you, I I imagine myself laying on a beach on the Barbados getting a tan. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> it's a great thing. So. I have to talk to you about a movie. I understand your music got into a movie. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, my producer, Dwayne Scarrett, he was working on a, a short film which was about domestic abuse. And mm. he heard, Is That Enough? And he said, "This we could we could really use a song like this in this movie. And that was how I got the opportunity Oh, well, it's, it's really good. <laughs> it's a good. It's called uh, Sunshine Promises and Poker Faces. Yeah. Is it been out? Or yeah. Is it coming out soon? Su- Sunshine. There are two two films. The first there is Sunshine Promises was about um, human trafficking, okay. and it's 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 an independent short film, so okay. it's not. It's not been a. It's like not like a big Hollywood thing. Right. Right. And. The other one on domestic abuse was Porker Face, and that had Is That Enough in it. Wow. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting. Do you have any future plans for maybe possibly getting some music into some indie shorts or even oh, movies? Oh, I would love to, and I'm working <laughs> diligently. I'm diligently working on that, and, and I try to write music that, you know, it can fit anywhere and cross any any boundary, and that's my challenge to just write music that's, open and it's not closed off to one specific area so it can so fit anywhere. So where are you performing? Any places of it, uh, uh, recently or play, uh, places you're going to be at in the future? Well, I'm hoping to travel to the UK to do some mm. festivals, maybe do Snenton, the music festival again, but mm. right now I'm trying to balance that with writing and getting ready for this new EP. Wow. Yeah. Well, we'd love to have you in the United States, my dear. Because I would music... love to be there. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, your music is just great, and like I said, it was to me. It just really uplifted uh, my my personal my personal vision or story with it was that it uplifted me quite a bit. So, uh, why don't you name off your websites? Where can we find your fabulous music? Uh, you can find me on Reverb Nation. Okay. That's www.reverbnation.com slash only Sonia. Um, you can find me on soniaeden.com. Okay. You can and find there was one listed, uh, myspace.com, only Sonia. Is that one still, uh, that was one that was named? Yeah, I think it, I'm not sure. I haven't been on that one for a while because we've had some challenges with MySpace, but definitely oh, okay. Reverb Nation. And I'm okay, on Twitter, so... I'm on Facebook. Okay, so we'll stick with SoniaEden.com, yes. Facebook, Reverb Nation. Um, yes. it's, just, it's just great stuff. So what would you like the people of the world to know about you and your music? I would like, uh, I would like, like I would like them to, to enjoy the music, to savor it, to have it move them and and remind them of something wonderful or take them to a place that's wonderful. Like like just now when you said it, that music took you to Barbados lying on the beach, mm-hmm. you know, just and be uplifting. Just be memorable and positive. Well, it is. It's just fabulous. And um, we would just love to have you come to the United States. I, I, I'm praying that something works out for you there because you're fabulous, mm-hmm. my dear. You yeah, really I'll, are. Yeah, I will stay in touch, and I will keep you posted on what's happening. Oh, please do. Now, Ken, our, Ken Ween, our illustrious co-host, has a weekly newsletter. Um, yeah. And, yes, please let us uh, update us. Let us know what's going on with you um, because we just think you're great. Yeah. Monica, and or, did you have a question or anything for our friend uh, Sonia? Well, I just want to let Sonia know that um, if you'd like to share any news with us, yeah. When you're completed your album and um, it's released, go to www.itmattersradio.com and okay. there's a little section there that says "Tell us your news." Yeah. And drop definitely. us a line and let us know what's going on, and we'll get it out. 
Yeah. Thank you very much, Monica. Oh, you're welcome. You're just you've got wonderful, wonderful talent, and um, I don't know. It, it, that's why we're here. We want yeah. To see the <laughs> we talent. want you to get out there. We we love you. Your your yeah. music is fabulous. Absolutely thank you. Fabulous. Thank you for including me. Thank you very oh, you much. You're welcome. Thank you. And we will look forward to Sonia seeing you again. We hope uh, you know soon. That would yeah. be fabulous. Yeah. Keep in yeah. touch. Yeah, I will do, and I'll listen to the show. I'm really glad I found it as well. That See, I know right. about it now. Tell your yeah. tell your friends. Not that we're you know self promoting or anything. <laughs> no, I will do. I will do. I will spread the word. I will do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, p- please yeah. do. Um, it's a good show, uh, and uh, we we and we're really good. proud of it. We're really yeah. proud of it. You're doing yeah. good work. Really great work. Okay, folks. So just a reminder again: you can find Sonia Eden, uh, SoniaEden dot com, and also Reverb Nation. She has just a big list of songs, and please let, please uh, promote her because she's just fabulous. Thank you so much, Sonia, for joining us. We just we just love you, and we and we're looking forward to seeing you again. Thank you, thank you for having me. You are Take welcome. Care, Sonia. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Right. Wow. Stay with us. It Matters Radio continues right after this. The Music Troubler with Kathy Barham on Radio Fluid. Welcome to The Music Truffler. I'm Kathy Barham and each week you'll find me here playing you the best in new releases alongside some tracks that don't get a lot of airplay anymore. If you're new to the show and you're wondering what type of music we play, well, all sorts really. We don't really take too much notice about genre, but as long as it's good music, you'll find it here. We also have a featured local artist spot whereby North Wales bands and musicians can send in their music and we'll give it some airplay here. And I'd just like to mention that if you're one of those people that is up early, then maybe you'd like to tune in to our brand new breakfast show, which is on between 8 and 10 a.m. and is hosted by Paul Baker. So you've got no excuse now not to tune in to Radio Cluid as soon as you wake up in the morning. The Music Truffler with Kathy Barham on Radio Fluid. <laughs> the pearly I love her. Me. But it rhymes with early, so now I know what it means. <laughs> yeah, up early. It sounds, it's a, she kind of blended the words together, a pearly. So yeah, it sounded like it. a pearly, but it's up early. Right. Okay, I am really psyched, and I know Me that too. everyone here on the show is. Um, we have been waiting weeks to bring on our next guest. So, Ken, please, will you introduce these wonderful gentlemen to the listeners? Well, we had music from Barbados and an ad from Wales across the pond. And now our next guest uh, from wonderful California. Uh, If you want a commercial with a humorous twist, a promo that people will actually listen to and enjoy, well, you should contact our guests. Bill Chamberlain and Don Sinclair of Stage 3 Productions. These are two funny, quirky guys, and we are delighted to have them with us. Of course, for them, being on a radio show is a no-brainer. After all, they have had years of experience as radio DJs, which does bring up a question for Monica, Kerry, and myself. If we keep on doing It Matters Radio, will we lose our brains too? So... Bill, Dawn, welcome. Well, thank you. How are you guys? Thank you. And yes, you will use, you lose your brains. <laughs> okay. Well, at least I, I know it's coming. That's a pretty good <laughs> you know, lost ours a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Bill, well, and hi, Dawn. You guys are fabulous. I just want to mention that these guys go back to the 60s my dears, with, uh, you know, various radio stations. And I have listened to both of them, and they were just fabulous. And together, you guys really must be nuts on a half shell. <laughs> <laughs> a little yes, plug for the book. 
Yeah. Yeah, a little plug on the book. Absolutely. A little plug. <laughs> you know me. Well done, Carrie. <laughs> well <you>. done. <laughs> Thank you, Carrie. Uh, and yes, you can get yours now by calling me at. Anyway. Yes. yes. <laughs> by all means. <laughs> No, it's you know. Speaking uh, of how people get call you, Don and 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 Bill, uh, I didn't have a website to tell people. So, is there a website for uh, how do they reach out to Stage Three Productions? Well, in all honesty, you can't. Because, <laughs> oh, okay. Because I only retired from the industry uh, about two days after we got into it, uh, mostly because we realized that. A lot of the people in this industry are just crazy. But seriously, we, we retired some time ago, and uh, what we did for you guys and what, what you're going to be listening to tonight is what we did back when Stage 3 was operative. Uh, you can go to uh, gwgavp.com uh, mm-hmm. to get a hold of me. It does have my email address there. And if you okay. offer us enough money, I, I would imagine we could come out of retirement. Hey, eh, Don? <laughs> well, we're, we're looking at contracts, yes. Yeah, we'll look at anything once. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if it's a good looking girl, right? <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. No matter why I'm uh-huh. in that part, though, okay? Yes. Yes. Just to let you guys know, I, and I think I already told Bill this, that I was a radio, um, what do you call it, Savoy Truffle, and I would go down to my local radio station and feed my DJs. Just to, let, just to let you guys know. Oh, yeah? Well, yep. <laughs> we're glad somebody did. Yeah. I wonder how I got so fat. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Carrie? Yes? Weren't you the one that listened to me at, on KLOK? Yes, indeed. Yeah, I did, I too. Know. This is Monica. Monica. I didn't know until you were talking about it the last time you were on that it was you. Uh. <laughs> I got to admit, I never heard either of you. I'm from out east, and I never heard either of you. That's okay. I'm glad that I've gotten to know you. (laughs) It's good to know you, Ken, and the more people that know us, the better we feel. I'm not sure about Don, but I feel with my hands, quite honestly. (laughs) Well, you know, I'm I'm technically retired, too, so with my retirement, I I decide doing the show and other things. I, I write novels. What are you guys doing with your retirement besides chasing those girls? Go ahead, Don. Tell them what you're doing. Uh, I'm uh, working on keeping the house running. Okay. <laughs> the house running, okay. Doing plastering and spackling and changing lighting and things of that nature, landscaping, whatever. Yeah, all those glamorous things, yeah. Don, that's almost as exciting as radio. Uh, really? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there, there, there's radio and then there's radio. The, mm. the, the radio most people think of um, when you see WKRP or, or any of those other documentaries um, is, is different today than it was then. Mm. Uh, and to, today you have by far fewer people. Um, in and fact, far for, less fun. For every uh, for every five or six radio stations now that are under one roof, you may have only uh, three or four live human beings on the air. You know what mm-hmm. I hate, John? I hate that they play the same songs at the same time every single day. Well, uh, it's pre-recorded, right? Yeah, they try. They try very hard not to do it. But uh, the, when you're playing um, a very tight playlist, and and stations that do that are stations that typically have uh, consultants. So the people making your music decisions are typically thousands of miles away from your radio station. But um, they'll have. I once had a. Here's an example, and this hopefully will make my point. I once had a consultant tell me that if the radio station's average time spent listening, which is a a number that comes back from the ratings, if the time spent listening was less than four minutes, he'd only play one song. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And and do we have this guy's name, Don? (laughs) I I wouldn't... uh, 
I wouldn't mention that because, because again, his, he was using that as a as an extreme uh, thought. But that basically gives you the the idea is you take a look at how often you turn over your audience, and your your top most popular songs should show up in that in that time block over and over and over and over again. Uh, not taking into account that you have what what we always attracted was a core audience, mm-hmm. and the core audience is with you for hours on end every day. Mm-hmm. And they're not just listening to the songs; they want the discussion, the fun, the the ad libs, all that stuff. Yes, yeah, so you guys time, were very good at. It. There was a time when radio was a companion, mm-hmm. and. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then uh, a lot of times you get people who try to convert art into numbers and and it, it just uh, in any creative forum like that it just doesn't work this is really getting heavy <laughs> <laughs> can we can we play one of our spots and lighten this up before i start crying oh yeah <laughs> really I'm, I'm i don't know monica can we do that <laughs> Yeah, let's, no, Monica, let's, let's write the boys up. a radio spot that uh, Bill and Don created for us, and we just adore it, and I know you will, too. Welcome to our discussion of It Matters Radio. Our guest today is Angus McWilliams. Hi, lady. Let's get on with this thing. I'm on my way to a birthday party for Nessie. You're throwing a birthday party for the Loch Ness Monster? Well, first of all, it's not a monster. And second of all, I'm talking about niece Nessie. She's a wee bit of a lovely lass. I see. Well, okay. Angus, can you give us your thoughts on It Matters Radio? Hi, wonderful people. They had me on a while back to talk about my book. Your what? My book. I wrote a book about the adventure in Scotland. Oh, I see. A book. That's what I just said. What are you, duff, man? It Matters Radio focuses on discovering new talent and bringing important indie artists on the air. Monica, Kenneth, and Carrie offer up meaningful conversation on new music, books, and fun topics. It's unlike any other radio program known to man and woman alike. Uh, you can say that again. Known to man and woman alike. Uh, just because I said you can say it again doesn't mean you have to say it again. I'm just doing my best to show everyone that It Matters Radio basically brings variety, fun, and entertainment with a sincere desire to discover new topics and talent. Well, why didn't you just say that? I just did. Hey, laddie, remind me when I can listen. It Matters Radio is on every Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. You Americans with your different time zones. We only have one time zone in Scotland. And that would be... That would be the time to done a pint or two of ale. It Matters Radio, for the best in conversation, music, books, and entertainment. Join us Thursday evenings at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Discover the depth, diversity, meaningfulness, caring, guest-focused, friendly, enjoyable atmosphere of It Matters Radio with Ken, Monica, and Carrie. Uh, That's a mouthful of a hog one. Yes, and I'm going to go brush my teeth now. It Matters Radio. Well, now that we've promoted your show and, and taken a commercial break. <laughs> what about I, that, I love um, that. I love that commercial, but I, I, I have to tell you, every week I listen to that commercial and I say to myself, can we live up to that commercial? Probably not. And then I say, yeah, no. <laughs> Well, but you got to keep to... trying, Ken. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So, Bill, how did you guys get together? When did you and Don first get together, if you guys can talk a little bit about that? It's funny you ask that, because I, I discovered today that it was 63 years, no, I'm sorry, 66 years ago that Don and I first met at KC 152 in uh, Oxnard, California. He wow. Was, 66 uh, years ago? Yeah. Don, are you surprised? Older than we thought, Don. <laughs> Thirty-six years ago. I'm sorry. I'm old. Now, Give me a break. Bill, Bill was was never the mathematician in the group. I am a product of the LA high school system, so leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that explains it all now. Yeah. Well, I'm from the East Side San Jose, man. I know what you're talking about, is it? <laughs> hey, you got man. That's a good place to live, you know. Yeah, anyway, these are rough neighborhoods, man. I have to tell you. <laughs> so you know, it was 
Uh, can we narrow down? I don't even remember exactly which year it was, but it would have been about 78? Somewhere around there. Wow. Anyway, Don was working as the morning man. I was uh, brought in to, to do production, and uh, the program director said to us, we need something uh, for Casey Radio Bingo. Don, tell them about that exciting promotion. <laughs> Okay. Well, first of all, radio uh, radio bingo is just as bad of a promotion as it sounds. Um, <laughs> okay. I, the idea was that you would play bingo on the radio. Now, we had a music-intensive top 40 rock and roll radio station, 50,000 watts blowing music up and down. What was it? Klamath Falls to Baja. Wow. And we're going to stop right in the middle of a show and take 30 minutes to play a bingo game. Oh, no, everybody's fall asleep. Mm-hmm. Now, so um, it was brilliant. Yeah. So, so the program director comes to, comes to us and says, I, I need promotional announcements for this, and he describes what it is. I don't know about Bill, but I was pretty sure this was a joke. Yeah, I was. Um, it it was not a joke. Um, so <laughs> we we, we turned it into you? one. We did. Yeah, we know. <laughs> but what what we did was uh, I first looked at it. I said we're going to be expected to come up with promos because there's new bingo cards every week, and the thing's running for what ten, thirteen weeks, something like that. We would have to come up with new promotional announcements every week for this thing. And in those days, you in the radio production at a radio station, you just you just sat down and you knocked out a, a commercial, and if it was within the right amount of time and all the words were right, it was considered done. There you go. It was, it was um, every 60-second spot you would be knocking out every four or five minutes. The... Not a lot of creativity, but I uh, we looked at this, and I said, first of all, what we need to do is come up with a theme. We'll come up with characters and a general theme, and that way it'll be halfway written for us every week. There you go. We don't have to look for new ideas all the time. Which then helped we us started, a lot. We started working on a theme, and we're talking about someone who would go to all these different stores. Our sponsor had numerous locations around the area. And you would pick up bingo cards there every week, new new bingo cards. And we thought, well, wow. well, how could we how could we entice people to do this and and make it fun? And somewhere, Bill and I started to kind of merge into three different people, um, and it was more of uh, of. I would be trying to rope him into some form of reality, and he'd be pulling me out of my concrete boots and and such into having some more fun with this. We, um, and in fact, all of the ideas that we've come up with, uh, there's no way to identify who did what because it's just one person says something and somebody else springboards off of that and somebody else springboards off of that. A perfect example is the title of the book, Nuts on the Half Shell. I called him one evening mm-hmm. going, I have this book. It's all written. I don't have a title. What can we do? And we bounced things back and forth, and suddenly someone came with, up with nuts, and someone came up with on the half shell. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, in, this, in the case of Radio Bingo, we developed a character who would go around to pick up the bingo cards every week, but he would have them tattooed on his body. <laughs> and his wife then would would play bingo on on his body. And it just okay. sort of went from there. Yeah. yeah. Claude yeah. Hopster was his on his body. <laughs> and he uh, his wife covered the uh the uh, marked the numbers off with chocolate. Great for a real gooey game. Yeah. yeah, it made for Chocolate. a real gooey game, but it was a whole bunch of fun when it was all over. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That's good, Bill. <laughs> well, it was much better than when they used lipstick because so much better. they have to take a shower ever after every game. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how we remember all these lines from 36 now, years ago? Do we have Do we have episode one of of those handy anywhere? Uh, I know I don't. They might. Oh. <laughs> Monica, have you got the KC Radio bingo spot? No, I didn't get those. Okay, well then, oh. why don't we just go with uh, the uh, texture goat? That's what I'm saying. I didn't get those. That's, I had told you I that. Thought I thought I sent them to you. No. Uh-oh. Oh, no. We're going to have to have them on again. No. We're going to have to do them live. I mean, <laughs> Is this going to what be a bummer! Long, but I would have loved to have heard those guys because I, I know would it. too. Well, <laughs> so um, I'm going to go ask this question over to Bill because um, he's doing a lot, and Don is just—they're just great friends for one thing. So you are doing a movie. Can did you want to mention your movie at all, Bill? Because I think it's really fabulous that you're doing it. Yes, I did a movie, um, and quite honestly, I, I I did a book too, but. Uh, well, whereas the book is is published and ready to be sold, the movie is in the very formative stages, and uh, we we go into editing next week. So I really don't want to talk about that because I don't want to jinx anything. Okay, so let's ah. talk about uh, the book. And uh, oh, okay. you know, I have I have a hard time pronouncing that book title. Is it? Yes, you do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. you do. Love you too. Okay. Um, so is how how do you pronounce that? Because it's, it's you know, great. I have asked several people uh, that same question, and uh, most of them come up with several different answers. Uh, the one I trust is, so do they. So do they. Okay. So do they. And wow. it means the, the love that remains, and it basically is a nostalgic longing to be near again to something or someone that is distant uh, or distant or has, has been loved and then lost. Uh. So from that title, you can – not the actual title, but the description, you can guess that it's pretty much of a love story. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's uh, it's the story of Don and I when we okay. were in formative years. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 I don't think that was I a joke. Know. <laughs> not, that there, not that there's anything wrong with that, but it was a joke. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a story uh, that happened uh, many long years ago in a galaxy far, far away. Mm-hmm. And uh, it takes a, lo- a look at the life of these two people, Rick and Annie, uh, and their relationship up to a, a certain point where things disintegrated, and their lives after that, and how uh, the the consequences of that dissolvement of their relationship, and then the uh, the results of that relationship many many years ago, or many many years after mm-hmm. the uh, dissolvement. Damn, I should write so that. It's good. Yeah, it's it sort of a like, lot more, a lot more feeling, emotive kind of book. It's, uh, not, it's not a humorous book you, like uh, the yeah. last one was. No. Yeah, I'm looking forward to reading it. When you, but I, ready, didn't when I you send you the manuscript, Ken? You did? I thought, okay, okay, I'm just screwing up to no end. No. <laughs> no, no. Believe me, if you had if you had sent it, I'd have read it. <laughs> oh, no. I enjoy it. I enjoy it not so much. I would I'm probably have gotten halfway through this one before I realized it wasn't funny. I'm sorry, but all of a sudden you saying I enjoyed not so much that sounded very funny. <laughs> <laughs> what kind? Like cashews or macadamia? Oh, yeah. Well, actually, I've always liked Brazil nuts. My. There you go. Hey, Don? Don, yes. are you there? Yes. I was I, just I, looking for a copy of one of the uh, commercials, and I, I always used to have them on my phone, and I don't seem to. Well, oh, that would have been fabulous. I'm if looking right that. now to see if I can find one. i tell okay. you what. Uh, Don, do me yes. this. Uh, tell them about uh, the the phone ringing while you're in church. <laughs> okay. Um, and I've got the ours, AC Radio bingo when you're ready after you're done with that. Okay. Um, 
a friend of ours came into town, and it was in Southern California we had this absolutely gigantic church called the Crystal Cathedral. Uh-huh. And oh, sure. I mean, thousands of people would be there every Sunday. Um, well, long story short, uh, the Crystal Cathedral building in the property was changing hands, and this was going to be the last Uh, one of the last weeks that they would be in that building before they moved to the new building. And a friend of ours was in town, so we made a point of going. Um, Now, I don't know whether we – well, I do know we got there very early, so we had our choice of seats. So we're right there on the aisle in about the third or fourth row, Um, right there. And people are gathering around – well, on my phone, I uh, I have uh, ringers that I've made for the various people that call, so I can identify who they are. And uh, one of them, um, for Bill, is part of one of our commercials. <laughs> now, no one ever calls me, so I didn't turn my phone off while we're there, and in a moment of prayer, when the whole building, you could hear a pin drop, what they heard instead of a pin was, I've got the texture if you've got the goat. (laughs) With that in mind, I have that commercial in front of me. I'm going to play it over the phone and and see if we can actually hear it, okay? So hang on, here we go. Okay. Yeah, let's try. You've got the goat. No, no, that's not. Oh, my goodness. You did. I did with my texture goat. That's texture coat from mm. factory authorized improvements and for houses. Not goats. No. Oh, you can my. beautify your house with texture coating. It's 20 times thicker than paint. I noticed that when it went on. Just call 4857733 for a free estimate. 4857733? Don't let someone get your goat. I call factory authorized improvements 4857733. Uh, I've got the texture Okay, there you go. That's the texture goat. <laughs> 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 So, so this is what all the the whole congregation heard um, instead of the instead of the prayer. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I like that. We were we were memorable in church, and this is the uh, first KC Radio Bingo commercial. Here it goes. Okay. This is your roving reporter once again speaking with Herman Fenster. Hello. Herman, you may recall, has had his body tattooed with 32 KC Bingo. And there's eight new ones every Friday at the Corbs in San Barbara and Ventura counties, right? That's true. Herman, a number of people have been wondering, how do you mark your bingo cards? Well, first we use beans, but uh, my wife is allergic to beans, and when she sneezed, she'd blow the whole game. That can be troublesome. Say, Herman, I trust you found a solution. Yeah, we did. First we used lipstick. Lipstick. Yes, it was a lot of fun marking them numbers, but it, I had to take a real quick bath in between every game. And now <laughs> we use chocolate. Chocolate? Yeah, it makes for a real good game, but it's a whole bunch of fun when it's all over. <laughs> and there is your Casey Radio Bingo. Okay. <laughs> That's, That's so, funny. That's funny, guys. That's really That's just that, began, that began your, your work and creating all these great promos and commercials. Huh? We, uh, we only was, got censored yeah. once. <laughs> yeah. And that yeah. was when uh, Herman Fenster was uh, was running out of room, and uh, he needed more space for the next week's bingo cards. And and we were doing um, we were doing a transplant on him to add another arm or leg or or something like that. And, and the next liver. Yeah, they said we don't we don't think so. <laughs> 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 you guys, you guys are gonna have to come up with something else. Um, so we changed it to "I better put on some weight," which is even funnier when you think about it, because all that does is make the tattoos bigger. But at least it, at least it got us where we wanted to go. And it worked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We had uh, commercials running not only in the the South Coast area in Ventura, Oxnard, but we also had a lot of commercials running in Bakersfield. And I don't have an example of the right Reverend W.W., but the right Reverend W.W. was, uh, he was a man of the cloth. Friends, I want you to get up close to your radios and feel the power. And uh, this was running for Bakersfield Audio in Bakersfield. 
And uh, he was mm-hmm. inviting everybody, obviously, down to Bakersfield Audio to, to partake in all the goodness down there. And uh, I found from a friend of mine who was our uh, salesman in Bakersfield that uh, kids on the campus at, at, at Bakersfield High School were doing impressions of uh, our commercials. And uh, I actually think there was a point where they had actually called the radio station and requested a, our commercials. Wow. <laughs> cool. I know that was great that yeah. people could actually call in and request something. <laughs> and there yeah, were people who actually radio. answered the phones. <laughs> Well, you know, oh, Don and I worked radio in the when radio was really fun, when you could yeah. actually be a personality and have fun and and commu- or you know talk with your audience. Uh, Bobby Ocean said it to me best. We, as disc jockeys, included everyone into our family. We mm-hmm. talked with them. We didn't talk to them. We talked with them, and we treated everyone mm-hmm. like family. And I quite honestly don't know if they do that anymore because I don't listen to the radio. Mm-hmm. Well, and the, for the most part, there aren't people there to do that. Yeah. Because they don't use human beings at most of the stations anymore. No, they, well, neither do we. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, don't, we, don't use human, we don't use human beings either. I, so, I you, know, you know, we're, we're, Monica Carey and I, we're, we're uh, you know, uh, computer generated. Yes, right. There you go. <laughs> Everyone is just an all just a, a product of one big gigantic imagination. Basically, a good part of that was Don and mine. <laughs> well, I, you so know, how long I, ago did you guys? How long ago did you guys retire? Oh goodness gracious! I retired from radio in 2006. We retired uh-huh. from each other. Well, I, I'm not sure if we actually retired from each other or just got tired of each other. Uh, <laughs> We got tired, and then we got retired. Yeah, uh, and that was uh, some time ago. I I don't really remember how long ago it was, but we were together uh, long enough to earn us. I think it was twenty-seven creative advertising awards from the Bakersfield and wow. uh, Ventura County Advertising Club, and wow. a lot of people are sitting here. Wow, Ventura! How exciting! The 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 thing that did make it exciting was the fact that the judges they had for their ad competition were were from Los Angeles. They were from big name agencies, mm-hmm. and our very first award for KC Radio Bingo, the entire night, Don had entered things of his own, and I had entered things of my own, and uh, all night long we just sat there picking our noses, going, "Wow, this is a lot of fun." <laughs> and throughout the entire evening, uh, the the runner up would be played. And wouldn't it be would be announced, and then the winner would be played if it were radio or TV. And the very last uh, part of the program was for self promotion. And uh, what they did was they announced the winner, and then played all twelve of our KC Radio Bingo spots. And, wow! Uh, uh, everyone, and, and I'm not putting this, you know, I'm not joking about this. Everyone was laughing and rolling in the aisles. They they were dying. We got offers from agencies that evening going, would you guys come see us, please? Wow. And uh, so from one, from that one campaign at Casey uh, was the birth of Stage 3 Productions. I actually said to Don, I said, what are, you, what are you looking to do for the rest of your life? And he told me that he was married. And <laughs> so I said, no, I'm, I mean work-wise. And that's when we got together and said, hey, this – we might have something here. We really did have something that was uh, was magical. It was like two people combined in one, two minds working simultaneously. Wow. Yeah, I, I got the feeling as I talk to you guys and as I listen to the to the things you've done for us and all that I, you know, I'm a shrink by training, and I feel like I'm I'm talking to a schizophrenic with two bodies. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> And that wouldn't be wrong either, laddie, because there's so many people inside of me you just can't know. And I know the feeling, laddie. I know the feeling. <laughs> you know what's funny? And Don mentioned this earlier, how uh, we would get together and uh, <laughs> I almost went, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's from the motion <laughs> picture. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Don and I would get together, and he had to reel me in, and I had to reel him out. So it kind of gives you an idea of, of which one of us was probably a little more insane than the other one. 
Uh, oh, which one is taking the Thorazine method? What? <laughs> <laughs> Neither one. I don't know. Oh. But we, when we worked, we we just it was it was magical. It, it just it came to us, and it was it was a lot of fun. And uh, what, what can I say when 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 uh, you know we liked what we did? We had a, a saying, as a matter of fact. Don, tell them the saying. Well, no, no, go ahead because I don't want to be blamed you, for this. Do you want the story, or do you want me to just throw the, this thing out here? Well, we're almost out of time, so just the saying, and then we better get because they're going to kick us off a long talk. We and one day we looked at each other after a particularly good commercial, and we were listening to it back, and and one of us looked at the other and said, "God, we're great," and and we both pretty much agreed on that. So, but. But a couple of weeks later, we were doing a commercial that we were not so happy with, but neither one of us could put into words what we didn't like. And then I asked him, would you say, God, we're great? And he said, no. So we threw it all in the can and started over. And from that time on, if we couldn't say, God, we're great, after we listened to one of our commercials, we'd throw it away and start again. <laughs> and we shortened that to GWG. So okay. <laughs> if it's not a GWG production, we threw it away. Yeah, because GWD sounds so much better than saying "God, we're great." God, we're great. That's, I just wonder if like they had ego. <laughs> wow, you guys are fabulous. You're really fabulous. You guys are so yeah. talented together. You need to continue this. <laughs> yes, really. You really should. Well, we're they doing play off each other beautifully. Days, <laughs> yeah, we are, things... we are doing two more promos for you in May. Oh, thank you. Oh, we great. Love you guys. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I apologize for not having those audios. I, I couldn't find them. I am really sorry, but um, if I do, I'm going to play them. Just so I, I will send them, them to you, and you can play them next time I'm on. Yeah. <laughs> no, let's use them for let's just, Hey, we want you back I tell you what, if you, send, if you could yeah, send uh, us all 12, all all of the, if you could send us all of the, the bingo ones, we could run a bingo one. game. <laughs> yeah, right. There we go. Just, hey, find the right tattoo artist. Hey, yeah, you can play along. <laughs> We're on. We're on. Oh, I'll bring God. the chocolate. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a great plan. It does. It's remarkable that you could make something so exciting out of bingo. <laughs> well, it's, it's all just waiting there to be discovered. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, I, I, we are running out of time, Barnett. Um, I hope you guys will come back again. Please. Yeah. Please do. Your, your and Bill, for your book, life. please, please, pretty please. Yeah. Like, please. Yeah, make sure I get that book so I can I will, I will send tell the world about it. I will send you the manuscript, Ken. I actually okay. sent it to Ken. I have it, and I'll send it to you again, Ken. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. And well, then... then some. Next time we'll have Don and me on, we'll actually play the commercials and uh, yeah. we won't have to play them over the phone. Yeah. Great. Right. Okay. <laughs> actually, we should. We need to have a special show just an hour of you guys. It'll be fantastic. That would be great. Let's, let's do that. Okay? If you guys yeah. do that, great. Yeah, well, hey, can either of you sing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> there you go. But, but sure, Bill. There you go. Yeah, you might have to sing a song, but, you know. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want to hear us sing. No. <laughs> you don't want to hear us sing either, I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's good. why we were on the radio uh, as DJs and not on the radio as singers. That makes sense. Yeah. Although it most does. DJs do think they can sing. <laughs> Never knew that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, Don, and thanks, Bill. Gosh, you guys are fabulous. Really? I just want to say that again. Thanks for coming yeah. on the show. Please. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank, you. thank you, guys. Okay. Thanks for having us. Okay. All and right. Let us know when you're ready to come back, and you'll be on. We just love Okay, you. probably a month or so for the film. Okay. Okay. All right. That's okay. Wonderful. Cool. We don't want to jinx it, so we're not going to say anything else about that. So. No. The film but, is is uh, in production, uh, and I really don't want to say anything about it. Yeah, That's I it. don't blame okay. you. And my, That's my lips are sealed. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> and as of right now, so are mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, take care, guys. And Thank you. Good night. Good night. Uh, I tell you, um, 
I wish in a way that we had radio like it was before. It's lost a lot, and I think you can just tell by listening to Don and Bill tonight that mm. it's really lacking, and I think profits went ahead of um, creativity. Mm-hmm. And it's a yeah, bad thing. I agree. So maybe totally. we'll be able to change that if enough people protest. You never know. Yeah. But anyway, we're going to say good night for the evening, and I want to play this because this is something that you hear every end of the show, and this is something that Bill and Don did for us. And we thank them very much. This has been It Matters Radio with your hosts, Monica Brinkman, Kenneth Waynes, and Carrie Hall. It Matters Radio offers you the very best with meaningful conversations on new music, new books, and fun topics. It Matters Radio searches for and discovers the depth, diversity, and meaningfulness of topical subjects. It Matters Radio. Thank you for joining us this evening because it matters.